Hey there, Simone here. In this tutorial, Jason's going to walk you through the thrilling edge-of-your-seat process of upgrading your legacy MetaHumans to the new 5.6 version of the Creator. I mean, I'm absolutely thrilled to have my face and body contorted into a pretzel. The upside, for you anyway, is that the upgrade lets you build characters that are actually unique, or even, dare I say, attractive? Jason's gonna cover everything, from prepping your old metahuman in the online creator, to migrating them into 5.6, and converting their classic wardrobe into the fancy new parametric clothing system. Which means your outfits can now resize without exploding. Take it away, Jason. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go to the Legacy MetaHuman Creator online. Make sure Unreal 5.5 is selected, and then click on Launch MetaHuman Creator. And if you don't have any characters in here, you're going to have to go to the Legacy MetaHumans tab, select the one that you want to upgrade, and hit the Upgrade Selected Active Version. Or you might as well upgrade all of them at this point. Once that's all done, go ahead and click on Current Version again. Select the character that you want to upgrade to 5.6, and then hit the Edit Selected button. Your character is going to automatically be in face ROM mode. Just go ahead and click the face ROM button to turn it off so they're not moving. And then take a screenshot just in case you need to use that as a reference later. And finally, dress them up in the clothing you'd like to convert. Just a side note, don't bother documenting the parameter settings in here because they're not going to match up to the new MetaHuman Creator anyway. The main thing is just to make sure that they look how you'd like them to. And don't worry about writing down the specific numbers in here. Go ahead and launch 5.6. I'm just going to select the Film Video Blank project. And since the project names can only be 20 characters long, I like to put my projects into folders and subfolders just to make things a little bit more organized and manageable. And then my project names, I'll just usually use something very simple, maybe an acronym or a shortened version of the name, and then some form of the date and time in case you have multiple versions. Check the box for Don't Show This Again and click Update, and then you won't have to see that in this project again. And then just hit Dismiss. Open up the content drawer, right-click, choose Add Feature or Content Pack, Select third person and click add to project. Just close that window, close the other window. And again, check the box for don't ask again and click import. You can leave the settings default and just hit the import button on the window. Now let's go into the plugins. So go up to edit plugins. And we're gonna search for MetaHuman. And we only really need MetaHuman Animator and MetaHuman Creator. And then go to the top again and search for Cloth. And the only ones we need here are Chaos Cloth Asset Editor and Chaos Outfit Asset. Once those are all selected, go ahead and click Restart Now and save the project. Just close that, open up the content drawer, right click, go to Add Quixel Content, make sure to sign in, go to MetaHumans, go to My MetaHumans, select the one we're working with, choose Cinematic from the drop down. And even if you think you've downloaded it recently, just make sure to hit download anyway, because we really need the latest version of it. And you can't trust this version number, and you'll know what I mean in just a moment. Once it's done, hit the add to add it to the project. And this is what I'm talking about. If you don't have a compatible version that can be upgraded, you will not get this prompt that allows you to import and migrate. It'll just add it to the project without even prompting you. If that happens and you don't get the import and migrate option, just make sure to go back to the beginning of the tutorial. You're going to need to go to the online version of the creator and make sure to upgrade your legacy metahumans to the newest version. In our case, we want to click import and migrate. You can leave the settings default and just hit the import button. And this process does take quite a while. It might even seem like it's frozen for a minute or two. Once it seems like it's totally done processing, go ahead and click on the enable missing buttons. Restart the engine when you're prompted and save, of course. If it's not on already, go ahead and turn on real time by clicking this button or with control R on the keyboard. For people that are using a screenshot as a reference to create your new 5.6 version, you can skip ahead. It's not actually necessary for you to use the legacy 3D mesh as a reference for the new one. The screenshot will work just fine. Open up the content drawer and navigate to your imported MetaHuman. Double click on the blueprint. On the left hand side under components, scroll down to LOD Sync, select it, and then under the details panel on the right, under LOD, change num LODs to 1 and forced LOD to 0. Compile and save. And then close the window. Let's go back to our MetaHuman, drag them into the scene, and reset their transform. In the Details panel, select Fuzz, and then hit the F key to frame on their face, and rotate so they're facing the camera. Next, we want to adjust the field of view so it's not such a wide angle. So go up to Perspective, and under Field of View, change it to 15. And then we'll zoom out just slightly. Now we're just going to adjust the lighting in the viewport to match the MetaHuman Creator Studio lighting a little bit better. We're just going to start by deleting the sky atmosphere, the skylight, and the volumetric clouds. We don't need any of that. 
Next, select the directional light and reset the transform for location and rotation. Change the roll to minus 25 and the yaw to minus 80. Drop the intensity to 2 lux. Click on light color and change the V value to 0.75 and click OK. Change the source angle to 5 and finally the indirect lighting intensity to 6. And then we'll need a good backdrop. I'm going to just use the floor. So click the floor to select it. Change the Y location to negative 1000. Change the pitch rotation to 90 degrees. And then we're going to change the material to template base gray. And now's a great time to save. Next, we're going to open up the migration file for your character. So go to MetaHumans and you should see it in there. Just double click on it. And once it's done loading, go ahead and close the preview detail panel on the right. And just to show you how easy it is to bring that back, you can just go to window and then select it again to open it up. But let's keep it closed for now. Next, you're going to go to the topology dropdown and select skin. Click on the materials button on the left hand side. Now we're just going to do a window side by side mode with the new version and the legacy version. You can use the screenshot or the viewport and put them side by side however you'd like to. It's really just for reference and this is what worked for me. And if you are doing it this way, you will have to adjust some things just to kind of get the faces lined up. Keep in mind that you're not going to get them to look exactly the same for a few different reasons. Part of it's the lighting. Also, the field of view is slightly different between these two, but also because the new version has more realistic textures and features. And now is another good time to save. So I'm not really going to give you a tour of all the different parameters that are in here. The options are very similar to the online creator, but they are definitely different and the parameter numbers don't match up at all. You just have to kind of experiment and see what works best to try to match as closely as you can. And once you're done, make sure to save. Let's expand the creator window to full screen. Let's start converting the clothing and bringing it in. So under the camera switching menu, choose body, and then click on the hair and clothing button on the left. Scroll all the way down, and then double click on the default garment just so you can see how that works. And to remove it, you can just double click on it again. And in case you're wondering what the buttons at the bottom are for, prepare, unprepare, wear, remove. Prepare is for pre-computing the parametric fit data. It will prepare it to be worn and keep it in cache so it'll load faster. And unprepare will undo that, remove it from cache. And you can tell if it's been prepared and it's in cache if you see a little check mark next to it, like you see with the default garment. Wear and remove are pretty self-explanatory, but double-clicking on the garment is a quick way to add or remove the clothing from the character. Okay, let's bring back that preview detail window. So go ahead and go up to window and click on preview detail and it should pop back up. I'm not going to be using this outfit today, but I wanted to show this so you can see Epic's current recommendation on how to organize your outfits. I know at least with this outfit, if you don't create the correct folder structure, the outfit won't load the materials properly. For that specific fix, you can check Matt Workman's Cinematography Database YouTube channel. He's got a tutorial on how to fix that. Link in the description. Okay, let's create a quick folder structure. So we're going to go to Content, right-click, choose New Folder, and we'll name this one Outfits. Open up Outfits, and then we're going to create some subfolders. The keyboard shortcut to create folders is Control shift n so I'm just going to use that to speed things up. We'll call the first folder Tops, do another folder, and we'll call this Bottoms. One more folder, and we'll call it Shoes. Now go into the Tops folder, create another folder, we'll call that one Hoodie. Right-click on it and choose Add to Favorites. Go up one and go into the Shoes folder, create a folder called Boots. Right-click on it and choose Add to Favorites. And finally, go into Bottoms, create a folder called Jeans. One last time, right-click and choose Add to Favorites and another perfect time to save. I'll put this in the description, but here's a complete list of all the legacy MetaHuman clothing and the folder names I recommend. Now we need to make copies of the clothing on your old MetaHuman. So go into the blueprint, go to the viewport tab, select the hoodie first, click on the folder icon next to skeletal mesh asset so we can see its location, then expand out favorites, and then drag the skeletal mesh to the correct folder. Select copy. Then we're gonna do the same with the jeans and the same with the boots. And time to save. Now we can use the copies to make the new parametric clothes. We'll do the hoodie first. Let's rename it. Right click on it, choose rename, and we'll just name it SKM underscore hoodie. 
So on all the clothing, we're going to have to open them up and add the material color back before we convert them. But on the hoodie in particular, I'm going to need to make an adjustment to the mesh itself, and I'll show you what I mean. Double click on the hoodie to open the mesh editor, and then hit F to frame on it. We'll add the color first. Click on the drop down next to material slots. Mine's just the next one up in the list, and yours probably will be too because it's the same name, even though it's a different color. Now we need to make the alteration to the mesh. We need to remove the strings, and I'm going to show you why. Since the new system is not skeletal mesh based, the physics and the strings don't work properly once you convert it. I couldn't figure out how to make it work. My solution was just to remove the strings. I'd love to know how, so if somebody knows out there, please put it in the comments. It's kind of good to know how to alter a skeletal mesh anyway, so it's a good learning experience either way. So make sure you're in skin mode on the left, and then to help isolate the strings, you want to go to generate polygroups, and in the drop down next to conversion mode, select from UV islands and click accept. Go ahead and hit save. Then we're going to go to model, and then polygroup edit. Zoom in a little bit, maybe rotate up, select one string at a time, click on delete faces. Hit accept, save, and close the window. Next, we need to create a cloth asset. So we're gonna right click in the folder with the hoodie. At the top, search for cloth, select cloth asset, and we'll name it CA underscore hoodie. Double click on the cloth asset to open it. Then we're going to select all the nodes and delete them. So just click in a blank area in the graph and then hit Control A on the keyboard to select all and then hit the delete key. And then right click in a blank area in the graph and we're going to add the skeletal mesh import node, but you can just type in HIM. That's a quick way of searching for it. So just like in the viewport, you can hit F to frame on a node, zoom in on it. And with the node still selected, we want to drag the skeletal mesh to the slot for the skeletal mesh. Now we're going to drag off the collection pin and search for cloth and select cloth asset terminal. And if you want to see a preview of the hoodie, just to make sure it loaded in there, you can click in the viewport and hit F to frame on it. Then save and close the window. We'll go back to the hoodie folder, right click, and then do a search for outfit and choose outfit asset. And we'll name this one OA underscore hoodie. You'll get a pop-up with a bunch of buttons. Click on resizable outfit. Double click on the outfit asset. Then on the left hand side under variable overrides, twirl that open, check the box for sized outfit source, and then hit the little plus sign next to where it says array element. Twirl down the section that says index and also the one next to source body parameter. Go back to the hoodie folder and drag the cloth asset to the source asset. Next you can click on the source body parameter index zero drop down and search for preview and you'll select the preview body mesh for your character. Save and close the window. Last step, open up the hoodie folder, right click, and we're going to search for WARD. Select MetaHuman Wardrobe, and we'll rename this one WI underscore hoodie. Double click on it. Go back to the hoodie folder, and we're going to drag the OA hoodie to the principal asset slot. Click on the drop down just below it and select MetaHuman Outfit Pipeline. Now on the left, you'll be able to twirl open Pipeline, and then the submenu for Pipeline. And then in the drop down next to editor pipeline, you're going to select MetaHuman Outfit Editor Pipeline. Save and close the tab. Go back to our MetaHuman Creator tab and drag the WI hoodie to the outfit clothing box. And finally, you can double click on the WI hoodie and it should add it to the character. And it's a perfect time to save. And we can move on to the jeans. The steps are going to be exactly the same for the jeans and the shoes. Another quick musical montage while I speed through this section. All right, now we can convert the body to parametric and try it out. Click on the body button on the left and then click on the perform parametric fit button. Click on the model button and another perfect time to save. 
Then you can just start messing with the sliders and seeing how the clothing adapts. If you want to set the slider back to what it was originally, just click on the little pin icon on the right hand side. And if you want to reset the entire body back to the original, just click on the pin at the very top right. You might think that you need to click on the reset body, but that'll reset it back to the default body, which I'm kind of guessing you don't want on a custom character. This might be a good look for me. Now we're going to take it to the extreme just so I can demonstrate that you can produce clipping if you take it too far. In a lot of cases, all you need to do to fix it is change the neck base size, and then there's a little bit of clipping on the knee as well, so you can just adjust that with the slider also. There is a body hide mask that you can adjust, but I'll have to show that in another tutorial. I'm just going to reset Simone back to default, switch back to skin topology, and now's another good time to save. And we're ready to finalize everything, so click on the assembly button, and then click on create full rig. And then we'll test out an animation, so go to the body animation drop down, and then select maybe body ROM, and then just check and see if you see any clipping. Now we're ready to assemble, so just change the name to whatever you want. I wouldn't use the same name because it'll overwrite your legacy version. You can keep the root directory as the default location. There's actually no benefit to assembling your character into a different folder, and I'll show you what I mean. When you click assemble, you're going to get a pop-up message that it's going to overwrite some common files. That is going to mess up the skeleton for your legacy metahuman. And assembling your metahuman into a different folder won't actually prevent that, but I will show you how to fix it. If you haven't already, go ahead and click assemble, and then click OK. This will take a few minutes. Once it's done, go ahead and close the tab. We should still have our legacy metahuman tab open. If you don't, go ahead and open it, and you'll see the problem right away, of course. The issue is with the skeleton, so we just need to swap that out for the skeleton that just got created. On the upper left, click on Body, and then next to Skeletal Mesh Asset, you're going to click the little folder icon to bring you to it, then right-click on the Skeletal Mesh, go up to Skeleton, click on Assign Skeleton, and then search for the name of your metahuman. The naming convention changed because of parametrics, the skeletons are no longer shared, so it's called what your character's name is with skeleton at the end. Select the skeleton and hit accept. Click OK. Compile, save, and restart the engine. It'll open up to the level with the legacy metahuman in there, and they should look fully intact again. So now let's drag our new version in here, and we can do a little comparison. I'm just going to scoot this one over a little bit, and then go to our new metahuman folder, drag it in, reset the transform, and we can see them side by side. One last save, and that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.